And today we're going to be showing you our Nintendo Game Room Tour. Now a lot of you have been asking to see some of our collection. Uh, we've been collecting for uh, probably about a few years now, wouldn't you say? It's probably about four years, I reckon. Yeah. Four or five years. You know, we used to have a little bit of everything, PlayStation 1, 2, 3, you know. But we condensed it and we put it into a Nintendo 64 collection. There is some other Nintendo games as well, like Game Boy, um, there's, there's that kind of thing. But yeah, let's just jump straight into this and let's show you our collection. So what better way to start than with the Fantastic Systems? Now, we have all six of the Fantastic series. So we have Smoke Black, arguably the hardest one to get boxed because naturally most people had the standard charcoal black console, which is this one down here. Um, so they didn't actually make that many smoke black consoles just because you know it's too close to the same color essentially it's just a little bit more transparent and over here <laughs> we have our giant vulpix pop <laughs> just too cute we couldn't not get that could we no this is my favorite color yes the cherry red uh watermelon oh watermelon red <laughs> yeah watermelon red <laughs> and like yeah it is a very vibrant red looking console it is beautiful and as we come down we have fire orange next to some Zelda um, themed items here and as we come along we have a couple more Zelda items Link is just guarding this little chest down here we have some little World Nintendo figures and this is a light believe it or not so this just illuminates everything that's on this shelf and behind it I actually don't remember where I got this from other than the fact that somebody made it for me um, that is actually a slate and it is actually from the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker it's the um, the stone slate that is shown at the start of the game during the intro, which is super, super cool, obviously. Down here we have jungle green. To go with Zelda. <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> keeping those greens consistent. Down here we have great purple and um, <laughs> some friends of ours gifted us this awesome uh, plate. This is Link, naturally, Toon Link, my favorite version of Link, holding up some pizza that he just found, probably in this little chest here, and can't really read it down here, but it says, you found pizza, all hearts restored, which is just amazing, obviously. We have Oracle of Ages and Seasons down here, boxed and complete, with uh, an ocarina. Um, this plays all the different melodies from Ocarina of Time. Over here, we have a mask from First Four Figures, this was, uh, I think we bought this in Mankind, didn't we? Mankind, yeah. Yeah, super awesome store. Sometimes it gets some first four figure stuff. And of course, Ice Blue there as well. So that is um, all six of the fantastic consoles. What's your favorite color? My favorite one is Great Purple. I just love how vibrant and colorful that is. That is fantastic. And continuing on with the uh, console here, we have obviously our Charcoal Black. Um, a little controller holder of Banjo-Kazooie holding a Banjo-Kazooie cartridge because why not it works perfectly an entire encyclopedia of every game release for Nintendo 64 um I think they made about 244 POW UK games and uh we have 126 and we'll get to that in a second you can see how much it, that's going to look like in just a second have some boxed accessories here and down here we have a NES and SNES but don't be fooled by this because these are actually box onlys don't have the uh, systems but these are actually uh, believe it or not these are display boxes now I'm kind of a fan of display boxes just because I think that they do kind of hold their value in the sense that you don't really see that many of them uh, but behind there I actually have two that are still flat packed as well so I don't know what's gonna happen with those we'll probably just keep hold of those um, for the time being but this is uh, essentially the two main bookshelves here. It's a pretty awesome flex. It's not meant to be a flex, but we're pretty proud of it. We're uh, not really using this Nintendo Game Room Tour as a flex. It's kind of like a bit of a documentation of what we have. Something fun to look back on and obviously to make you guys feel pretty nostalgic as well. Because I'm sure a lot of you probably played uh, some Nintendo 64 games in your time, but uh, let's go on to the games. So this is what 126 games looks like. So we have... <laughs> they look really nice. Yeah, there is quite a lot here. Now we've got a couple of loose controllers down there for those Mario Party days. And um, 
before I pan over these games, we'll just kind of show a little bit more of what's going on here. So up here, right at the very top, we have, um, from the best of my knowledge anyway, all of the boxed um, color controllers that you can buy essentially with the same uh, design font and logo and everything on the front. Same design on the box as it kind of transitions into like that technical effect alongside the red strip. It's super awesome. So obviously we've got black, red, yellow, green, blue, standard gray, atomic purple, and my favorite, extreme green, limited edition. This one, I probably, <laughs> I would accept this is a bit of a flex actually, because it kind of is. That's like one of the holy grails um, of the controllers. Because you go- You were proud, didn't you? I, I was very proud to get that. I did pay a little bit more than I wanted to, but there's not many in the country, not many in the world, because you could only get this from Toys R Us back in the day. So it's incredibly hard, but that is pretty much all of the boxed controllers that you can get that all kind of look the same. Very proud of that. And we have a USB Nintendo 64 Tribute 64 controller, which is USB powered. It's got a wireless receiver, so you can play it on the Switch, you can play it on the PC. Super awesome. And of course, <laughs> wouldn't be complete without a Nintendo Switch boxed controller for the N64 as well. Just had to do that. On the other side of the room, we have our Super Mario 64 paintings from the Peach Castle, naturally. Do not try to jump in these. I have done that and broken my face many times. Over here we have the uh, Bowser Castle playset and over here we have the Peach Castle playset. Bowser, for, for some reason, kind of came with both. Um, <laughs> it's just reigning supreme anywhere he can, just trying to gain control of everything happy in life and of course a Star Fox 64 control uh Star Fox 64 controller a Star Fox 64 poster now I want a Star Fox controller damn it all why did I give myself that image shouldn't have done that um <laughs> down here we have some empty uh space for something else probably shouldn't get into collecting for something else because what we have is already kind of expensive and a little bit too much but down here just randomly uh this is actually a checklist for every uh, PAL UK game on the N64. Come on camera, focus, there we go. And as you can see, these are the ones that we've kind of ticked off, but there are so, so, so many games. Yeah, there's like three Australian PAL games. I think one's uh, Snowboard Kids 2, Starcross 64, and some random baseball game, but they're super expensive, so probably not gonna bother with the Australian ones. Now down here, this is kind of like a small little selection here of some of our GameCube games, some of our favorite GameCube games as well, like Star Fox Adventures, Zelda Wind Waker, my favorite Zelda game of all time. Um, I really want to see that on Nintendo Switch, but I can keep on dreaming. And speaking of Nintendo Switch, we have some controllers up here as well. A Zelda one, an Animal Crossing one, and a Super Mario one as well. I just had an idea of what you could have in your empty shelves. What's that? You could have all the different coloured GameCubes. Yeah, I'm not going to go down that avenue. I think that boat has sailed. <laughs> down here, a small stack of Switch games, but nevertheless, some really great ones here as well. Uh, this is Tunic. I have not played it yet because I'm a sucker for sealed games. I am one of those people, I'm sorry. Uh, but I may get around to playing it at some point or it maybe borrow it so that I don't have to open this beautiful game. But I have heard that it's incredibly difficult. Um, so I'm not to be fooled by that apparently. But naturally we've got some of the cutesy titles like Kitaria Fables, Klonoa, and what else is on here? Gosh, there's so many good games on the Switch now. When we started, there wasn't like a huge selection of games that we wanted, but there are so many more now. Um, I don't think so yet. I used to have that. Yeah, we should get that again at some point. That was really cute. That was adorable. The uh, box console, of course, and our Switch case, which naturally had to get that. That was freaking adorable as anything. And over here we have our loose N64 cartridges. That is absolutely filled up. It's like a treasure chest of good retro goodness. And also, of course, that stops us from having to keep on opening the boxes, which as you know, can cause damage in the long run. The things we have to do to maintain the integrity of our boxes. Now over here, continuing in this game room, oh, well, I should quickly show this off actually. Little Nintendo sign as you come in the door. Wouldn't be a Nintendo room without it. We have some of our posters and a Master Sword. I love how that's like perfect size for the Master Sword, that gap. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, just had to go with that. 
I had to put some really long nails into that wall though to, to get that to kind of hold up. But it just had to go there because those posters are amazing. Over there we have a Star Fox Super Nintendo poster and the Eevee Evolutions. And then down here we have some Corex just chilling by a Breath of the Wild canvas. I think that's Breath of the Wild, right? Or is it Tears of the Kingdom? Yeah, and I still need to play both of those because I haven't played either. I can't believe you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can all feel free to shoot me on that one if you want. The Koroks are certainly judging me. I actually got those from uh, Temu. Paid a couple of quid each for those, which I thought was pretty awesome. <laughs> you need time to find all the Koroks in that game. Yeah, probably a couple of years. Just playing this adorable Nintendo mix on the TV as well. And over there, we have a ginormous <laughs> Nintendo N block. Kind of an unfinished project. Originally wanted to put a, uh, a square glass top on top of that and have it as like a table. Maybe we'll do it at one point, but we need the glass in order to do that. And I'm not really sure how you get that. But yeah, in closing, let's go over these games. So 126 games in total. Um, some really heavy hitters uh, here as well, like Aiden Chronicles, for example. That's like a few hundred pound, I think. Bass Hunter. We have Blues Brothers. Again, really obscure titles that shouldn't really be uh, expensive, but for some reason are. Some classics, naturally, Castlevania, Diddy Kong, Donkey Kong 64. I mean, these are all fantastic games to play. Naturally, Banjo-Kazooie. And Banjo-Tooie is actually in mint, pristine condition, which is, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty happy with that. That did cost me a little bit of money, but I actually got it from CEX. Believe it or not, when that came in stock uh, in mint condition, I actually used voucher to get that, so that didn't really cost me that much. What's your most proudest game? Oh gosh, I will, I will probably come across to, uh, to that in a little bit, but Hybrid Heaven is, is a really fun, spooky, creepy kind of strange game by Konami. If you haven't played that, it's definitely worth a go. Um, the only reason I, I sort of have a special place in my heart for that is when I was a kid, this was one of the only games I had. Um, <laughs> and I didn't really get that far in the game, but definitely have some good memories of that. Very creepy kind of alien type game as well, where you, you kind of fight them as well. There's a bit of a combat style to that, so that's worth a go. Holy Magic Century. Naturally, I think every Nintendo 64 collector should have a copy of this. It's just beautiful in every single way. I would like to get Gex 3, um, but at the moment we only have Gex 64 into the Gecko. One thing I do know about Gex 3 is it the frame rate, The I don't know, it just kind of lags a little bit on the N64. The PlayStation 1 seemed to play a lot better for some reason. Now, if you haven't played any of the F-Zero games, please, please do. They are amazing. The music in those games is out of this world, literally, and they have a reputation for having some really great upbeat music that just gets you really pumped for the next race. Speaking of races, we've got <laughs> Formula One Grand Prix, some sports titles, we won't get into those, Earthworm Jim, Duke Nukem Zero Hour, again, this is another mint condition game, it's been very, very well looked after. Sorry about the glare, these are box protectors, I hate them and love them at the same time. Daffy Duck, <laughs> Duck Dodgers. I don't know why that's expensive, but it just is. Coming down, we have some other amazing titles here, like Iggy's Wrecking Balls. Kirby, naturally, who doesn't like Kirby? One of my favorite games, in fact, this actually might be my favorite game, even though it's not the most expensive, uh, is Lilac Wars, which over here in the UK, this is what it was called. It wasn't called Star Fox 64 as it was in America. And I think the reason for that was, um, there was some sort, uh, some sort of copyright law uh, involving a similar company name in Germany. You'll have to look into that because there is some truth in that. But um, yeah, very, very weird backstory to the reason why it's called that. Magical Tetris Challenge. Naturally, the Mario Parties. They are a great friendship builder and a great friendship destroyer. So you're always in for a party with that game. My favourite was Mario Party 2. <laughs> yeah, Mario Party 2 is definitely a cult classic. The costumes, the themed uh, boards, and it's just, yeah, it's just one of the best ones. For some reason too, just, I think, superiorly, uh, if, if, if that even is a word, just is just better than one and three. I mean, that's just our opinion. What's your favourite Mario Party? Maybe number three holds a better place in your heart. we got Mystical Ninja Goman. <laughs> Rush 2 and of course in here oh my gosh why do I own this 
Rush 2049, the most expensive game in my collection, a apart from maybe Aiden Chronicles. You didn't pay 24.99. I didn't pay 24.99 for it, no, but someone got an amazing deal because that game's like 575 quid nowadays. That is ridiculous. And speaking of expensive titles, Paper Mario, for example, again, somebody back in the day got that for £26. Who the hell was that person? <laughs> it's pretty insane. Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Puzzle League, some great Pokemon games. We don't have Pokemon Stadium 2, that's one that we are missing. A load of racing games, NASCAR, NASCAR 99. Um, and then we come down here and we have Resident Evil 2. My favourite! Yep, Starlight's favourite um, N64 game. I can understand why. And the cartridge was actually kind of different as well. Like, it was a really heavy cartridge. I think the interior was different as well. They had to free up space because it's such a large game. I think there was something slightly different about the N64 version where you can play as Toku. Is that in, I think that, yeah, that was the N64 yeah. version. Yeah, I think there was an added feature for that as well, yeah. Robot, Rocket, uh... Yeah, Rocket, Robot and Wheels. <laughs> and it's quite nice as well because some of these games have um, memories to them as well in the sense that we've gone all around the shots trying to find these games. Like this one was actually from Norwich. We, we picked this up in CEX and Norwich is actually quite strict with the condition of their games. So as you can see, like this has been, it's been really well looked after as well. So we do try and buy games from there. Same deal with Road Rash 64. This was actually from there as well, and as you can see, they've been very well looked after as well. They always look after. Yeah, they're pretty good. They are pretty good when it comes to condition. Now, I do actually have some box onlys. I'm a little bit of a, I don't know, bit of a collector. I don't know. Maybe a collector maniac is the right word to use. I don't know, but when I see these, I kind of want them because these would have been at the back of the pile. These would have been the last box on the shelf when these were being sold uh, back in the day. So we have Star Wars Shadows of the Empire and I actually have a box only Smash Brothers as well. I don't know, there's just something really cool about them. If anything, they might be rarer than the standard box because there's less of them. So I don't know, kind of like them for some reason. Shadow Man. Oh, Shadow Man. That's just, I don't know why that's just good. It's a really creepy game. If you've ever played that, um, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. But even on the PlayStation 1, definitely worth playing. And and Dreamcast as well, yeah, they released it on Dreamcast as well. And um, yeah, just a very, very spooky, spooky game. Scooby-Doo, <laughs> Super Mario 64. I mean, that is naturally one of the best games on the system, of course. I think most people can remember having some good times playing this and some very stressful times as well, because it was very hard. The penguin race. Yeah, you know, just, <laughs> I mean, I remember the clock level you jump through the clock face and you're just you're trying to run around on the gears and everything I just, oh my gosh nightmares uh, yeah the the zeldas classics naturally one of my favorite games yeah. majora's mask i don't know why but even that holds a special place in my heart just for the simple fact that it's just kind of got its own feel the whole game has a completely different feel even though they were using a lot of the similar assets for ocarina of time because um they had such a limited amount of time to get this game made so they used assets from um Ocarina of Time. That is twisted as well. I love the twisted. Yeah, you know. Oh, it's. And the three day countdown as well. Just the looming threat over your head with that scary ass moon. Random rumble pack. <laughs> Just to fill in that gap down there. And going across, we have some more of these titles. Now, some of them don't actually say what the games are on the spine, which is got one you, ha you, know, you have to kind of pull them out to see what you have there. Wipeout 64. <laughs> some Top Gears, uh, yeah, there's Taz as well, there's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, brilliant game, Tonic Trouble, again, funny enough, this was another Norwich game that we picked up back in the day, and you can see exactly what I'm saying, it's just in immaculate condition. We need to go back up there. Yeah, we do like Norwich, it's a very friendly city, we have some friends up there as well. Worms Armageddon, Xena Warrior Princess. Yoshi Story and of course yeah those loose controllers as seen before so this um, was our Nintendo Game Room Tour. We're super proud of it and to be honest with you there is kind of a bit of a, a happy and an unhappy ending to this video because we're actually going to be condensing this collection down. I've been thinking about it for a very long time and I've weighed up the pros and cons and I think it actually might be time to um, 
to get rid of three shells of these games. So my, my reason behind that is that we have 126 in total. We've got like, man, about how many is it? Like 100 and gosh. Well, there's 241 games. So whatever the difference is there. And some of these games now are so expensive, so hard to find. Some of them aren't even... You can't even find them anymore. Like Rat Attack, for example, can go up to £800. Um, there's Tom and Jerry, which is like 400 Tarzan can be like 250 Gex 3 can be like 200 So we're talking like thousands. And not to mention the huge, huge library of sports filler shovelware titles. And I, I just can't fathom paying thousands of pounds for sports titles that I'm just not going to play. And since realizing that we're probably never going to complete a full 241 UK PAL set, I'm kind of okay with us just having like the top three shelves worth of games, which works out to be between 61 and 64 games. <laughs> we might keep 64 games just because it's a fun number to associate with the Nintendo 64. So um, yeah, let us know what you think about that idea. But we're going to keep the best ones that mean the most to us, the ones that we get the most fun out of, the ones that I think are worth keeping, and we're not going to get rid of the whole collection. You know, we're going to we're going to condense it down and we're going to trim off the fat. That's what I like to call it. I like to call it trimming off the fat, keeping the meat of it, and just enjoying the best of how it is. 